and welcome to this video of lesson 411 using triangles to understand quadrilaterals part 2 and today's objective is that we're going to use triangle congruence postulates and theorems to prove properties of special quadrilaterals and you're going to learn to identify a kite a kite is a special quadrilateral with exactly two pairs of congruent consecutive sides. And let's go over just a couple of uh, quadrilaterals right quick. We have a rhombus. And recall that the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect one another. And since a rhombus is a parallelogram, the diagonals of a rhombus must bisect one another as well. So that means we're going to end up having congruent segments. I'm getting my pen here together. I forgot to get it set up when I started the lesson. hate it when I do that. Okay, so if they bisect one another, well, I can't get my pen to be writing. I've set it. Ah, oh, it's because my battery's down. Okay, there we go. Got it all set up and plugged in. All right, so since they bisect each other, that means this segment's congruent to this segment. AE is going to be congruent to EC, just like that, since they bisect each other. Okay, and recall that the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect with, okay, da, 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 same, same information. But what I want you to tell you about the rectangle is that the diagonals are congruent. So not only do they bisect each other, they're congruent. So that means that every one of these segments is going to be the same length. Now let's look at a square. Now a square is a quadrilateral with four congruent sides and four congruent angles. The first condition makes a square a rhombus. That means that a square with four congruent sides and four, I know just four congruent sides is going to make it a rhombus. Okay? Because a rhombus has four congruent sides. Now then, having four congruent angles makes a square a rectangle because a rectangle has four congruent angles. So as a result of that, a square has all the properties of a parallelogram, rhombi, and rectangles. So that means their diagonals are going to bisect each other, and they will be perpendicular, and they're going to be congruent. A lot of things to remember there about a square. Okay, not all quadrilaterals are parallelograms, and we had already learned that when we studied trapezoids because they're, not, they're a quadrilateral, but they're not a parallelogram. Another figure known as a kite is not a parallelogram either though it's a special type of quadrilateral. A kite is a quadrilateral with two pairs of congruent sides, but with no sides parallel. And see in the picture how AB is congruent to AC. I can write that out here. I've got segment AB is congruent to segment BC, and then AD segment AD is congruent to segment CD, but nobody's parallel to anybody. That's why it's not a parallelogram. Okay, the long diagonal of a kite separates the kite into two congruent triangles. So that means that triangle ABD is congruent to triangle. I'm making sure I'm getting all these C, B, D, because remember they're supposed to correspond, the vertices are. Okay, and because triangle BAD and triangle BCD are congruent, it can be shown that the diagonals of a kite are perpendicular. Now, my drawing here is a little off, but you're still going to get the idea that BD is perpendicular to AC. Therefore, I've got those four right angles. All right, so if I look at this uh, figure, 
And knowing that the diagonals of a cat are perpendicular, what is angle one going to equal? You know, and we feel like, uh, Miss Porter, you just told us that. Well, the measure of angle one is going to equal 90 degrees just because um, AH is perpendicular to MT. Okay, in this one, they're asking what is the measure of angle two? Well, let's determine what we know. We know that angle one equals 90 degrees. And then we have angle, it looks like it's angle TMA. We're going to call that 49 degrees. So if we have 90 and 49, we can figure out what the measure of this angle right here is, correct? We also know, because we're dealing with congruent triangles, we also know that this is 90 degrees here, this is 49 degrees. So we can use the triangle sum theorem to figure out what the measure of angle two is. So if you say, let me see, what do we say? We can just subtract it like this, 49 plus 90. And if you go through and you do all that math, because I believe that comes up to 139, you're going to get 41 degrees for a measure of angle 2. Okay, now they want to know what is the measure of X. That's the segment MA. Well, remember when we were learning about the special properties of kites, we learned that there were two sets of congruent segments. So segment AM is congruent to segment a T. That's how that looks like written out. A M is X. A T is 2.6. So there's your answer for segment A M. And then they want to know what Y is. And Y is down here. There again, we learned that these bottom segments are going to be congruent. So we know that segment M H is congruent to segment TH. MH is 4 and TH is Y. So hey, we've already got our answer right there. And I know y'all dread seeing these proofs, but we've got to go through them. There's some things that we have to prove. Um, and we need this practice of us going over these proofs together so you'll be better able to complete a, on the part two test. Okay, remember your first statement is always going to be your given. And we're going to put down here ABCD is a parallelogram. And that information is given. We also had given information that AF is congruent to CE. And I like to go ahead and mark up what's given. Now, the parallelogram I can't really mark up. But I can say, if I can find it right here, that AF is congruent to CE, and look here what I'm going to have to prove, that triangle DFA is congruent to triangle BEC. So we're looking at this triangle right here is going to be congruent to that triangle. That's what we're trying to prove here. So if I'm looking at that, and you remember we have those um, theorems and postulates that say angle, angle, side, side, angle, side, 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 side. So what I'm going to do, I already know that one set of sides, uh, corresponding sides, are congruent. So what I'd like to prove is that there's some other sides that are congruent and or prove that some angles are congruent. So I can use those theorems that I know. All right, so let's look. And I know a lot of you have trouble with this. You know, I write down the given. I don't know where to go next. 
Well, if you know you're trying to prove your triangles are congruent, remember I had all those thoughts. Oh, I've got all those postulates I've learned. Angle, angle, side, 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 angle, side, and so on. So I'm going to try to focus on that. Well, you go and you look at your picture and you say, well, I know since this is a parallelogram, I could prove that angle A is going to be congruent to angle C. But how would I do that? Well, you come down here, of course, and you're going to write angle A is congruent to angle C. And the way that we know that is, because this is a parallelogram, and what do we know about parallelograms? We know that opposite sides, or not sides, I'm sorry, angles of a parallelogram and I'm going to, well, I'll go ahead and write it out. Parallelogram are congruent. Okay, so what's my next step going to be? I've got one angle and one set of corresponding angles, one set of corresponding sides are congruent. I need something else. And you're going, well, there's really, right now there's not a way that I can prove that DF and DB are congruent. But I can prove that AD and BC are congruent. And let's look here. I got my little, put my little congruency symbols up there. And you think, okay, how do I know those guys are congruent to each other? And I'm going to write this up here right quick. AD is congruent to BC. Well, I know that those guys are congruent because I know that opposite sides of, and I'm going to, draw me a picture there, of a parallelogram are congruent. So I look at this now, I've got a side, an angle, and a side. And then up here I have my corresponding side, angle, side. Well, we just, we can prove that now. We can say that triangle DFA is congruent to triangle BEC, and we know that because of the SAS, side angle side theorem. And ta-da, we've proven what we need to prove. Okay, this one says in rhombus ABCD, AE is five centimeters. Find the following measures. If there's not enough information to find any measure, write NEI. Well, they tell us that AE right here is five centimeters. Well, what we know about a rhomb rhombus is that this side is congruent to this side. We know they bisect each other. And then we got some bisecting going on there. Other things we know about rhombus is that this angle is congruent to this angle. And I'm talking about angle DAB is congruent to DBC. We know, well, let me draw the whole thing there. Yeah, that those opposite angles are congruent. We also know with the rhombi that the... Um, the diagonals are perpendicular. Okay, so there's just some things there I jotted down before I even looked at the questions. Now they want to know what the measure of EB is. Well, I don't know what the measure of DE is. I don't know any other measures except the measure of AE and that's not going to help me find out what EB is. So on that one, I'm going to write NEI. Not enough information is given. Well, then they ask me, what is the measure of AC? Well, I know AC. I can figure that one out because I know that AE plus EC is going to equal the measure of segment AC. I know AE is 5. AE and EC are congruent, so there's another 5. So AC is going to equal 10 centimeters and you can even come over here and write five centimeters on there that helps you see that they're going to equal 10. Now for letter C it says what is the measure of DEC angle DEC well right here DEC right here is the angle that they're asking about right here well we know that these diagonals are perpendicular in a rhombus so we also know that we're going to be dealing with 90 degree angles. So there we go, 90 degrees. The next one they ask is the measure of EAB. 
and here's that one. We don't know what that measure is because no one that that, um, that other angle is 90 degrees where the diagonals are perpendicular, that's not going to help us solve the angles of the rhombus at the vertices. Okay, so there again, not enough information is given. All right, this one says in kite PQRS, PQ is 11 centimeters, QR is 5, QT is 4, RT is 3, and the measure of angle PQR is 96. And we're going to be up finding the rest of the measures. Well, I like to go ahead and mark up what I can because that's what's going to help me answer. So I've got 11 centimeters for PQ. It says QR is 5 centimeters. QT is 4 centimeters. Where's QT? There it is. And RT is 3 centimeters. Here's RT, 3 centimeters. And the measure of angle PQR, PQR, that's this whole angle right here. This whole thing, not just part of it. It's going to be 96 degrees. I'm going to write that right here. Okay, the, I've written down all the information that I know about a kite. The first thing it asks me is, what is the measure of TS? Well, I know TS, and it's going to be kind of freaky because of how do we solve it because we're used to the diagonals bisecting each other and business like that. Well, that's not necessarily happening with the kite, okay? But what we know is that triangle PRQ is going to be congruent to triangle PRS. So we also know that S, uh, TS is going to be 4 centimeters. And the reason we know that is, well, if you look right here, okay, we know these guys are 90 degree angles. So PTQ, we know that this is congruent to this, all right? And those are hypotenuse, okay? And we know that this leg is congruent to this leg, all right? And that this leg right here is congruent to itself. So that's a hypotenuse leg theorem that we learned. And the reason that we can say that the TS is four centimeters is because we got that CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay, part B says, what is the measure of RS? Well, here we know that RQ is 5 centimeters. We also know that these two segments are congruent to each other. That's a special property of a kite. And C is asking us, what is the measure of PS? Well, we've already noted that uh, PS and PQ are congruent. Another special property of a kite, they have two pairs of congruent sides. And D is asking what PT equals. Well, granted, we could go through there and do the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what it is. But in reality, they're not giving us enough information to tell you what the exact size is. But there again, I believe that there is enough information and that we could use the Pythagorean theorem. But the key says NEI. But you know what? I can't resist. Oh, let me put a C there. So A squared is going to be 4 plus B squared, and then I've got 11 squared. 4 squared is 16. I got B squared equals 121. 121 minus 16 is going to give me 105. And then when I get the square root of 105, let me put 105 there. When I take the square root of both sides, I'm going to get 10.25 centimeters. To me, that's what the measure of PT is. 10.25 centimeters. Okay, part E, they said, what is the measure of PTQ? PTQ. 
So they're wanting to know this measure right here. Oh, no, the, no, they're not. Sorry. Marked the wrong one. How about that measure right there? Well, we know that that equals 90 degrees because the diagonals of a kite are perpendicular. The next one is PTS. And again, that's this angle right here. And we actually already have it marked as a right angle. So we're going to say that's 90 degrees. And then we have PSR. Well, we know that these opposite sides are going to be congruent. And we also know that triangle PSR is congruent to triangle PQR. So both of the sets of that information are going to tell us that it's 96 degrees. And then the measure of PQT. Well, I said something a while ago that's not true. Um, that these that this is going to bisect the angles and it's not. Even though we know the whole measure of this angle right here is 96, we have no idea what the measure of this angle right here, this uh, PQT, we don't know. We do not have enough information for that. All right. What we've learned in this lesson today is that uh, you continue to use triangles to explore the properties of triangles, and we found that the diagonals and sides of a rhombus form four congruent triangles. The diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. The diagonals of a rectangle are congruent. A square is both a rectangle and a rhombus. The diagonals of a square are congruent and are perpendicular bisectors of one another. And last, we learned that a kite is a quadrilateral with two pairs of congruent sides but no sides are parallel to one another, and the diagonals of a kite are perpendicular. You should be going through and doing the lesson 411, Understanding Quadrilaterals, um, part two, and to complete the student guide, read through the uh, pages in the reference guide to add to your notes if needed. Complete the following problems in the problem set, which is five through 15 odd. Contact me or attend TOGA if you have any questions before you complete the 411 quiz and make note of any general questions you may have when you attend CC. That's going to be it for this lesson. Maybe not. Uh, I just need to remind you right quick that you need to use your course and section number with all communication with me because that's going to help me help you faster. And that's going to be it for lesson 411. Thanks for listening.